I'm hiking to my grandparents' vineyard, but I'm a little bit afraid of what I'll see when I get there because it has been so many years. It's a fantastic hike. I have to go very slowly. It's pretty steep. So I stop every few minutes to just check out the view. Now, when I was younger, I would have taken either some beer or a wine with me, but I can't do that anymore. Still haven't found the vineyard, <laughs> but this is a, what an Italian is called a pineta. All these pine trees were strategically planted. Um, they not only look beautiful, but the smell is fantastic. Let's see if we can find the sky. I was afraid of this. La casa in Collicelli. The house in the Collicelli vineyard. No longer a vineyard here. One of my dreams as a child was to one day return to this place and reestablish those Malvasia white grapevines that my grandparents um, on my dad's side were known for making one hell of a wine with it. That's why back in the States I sometimes buy Malvasia white and make that kind of wine there as well. This is an excellent place to find truffles and my uncle Carmine was a master truffle hunter. Not only did he find a whole bunch of them, he also trained dogs to do the same. And what I learned from him is that the best truffles grow under oak trees. And um, his dog just found so many freaking truffles. E come diceva mamma, tutto cambia. That's Castello. And this was my grandparents' vineyard on my mom's side. This is where I learned a lot about t pruning vines from my grandmother. This is the main road. This we called Lupoz. It's like a well. I'm afraid to uncover it. But when we used to come here to work early in the morning, because it gets freaking hot after 10.30, we would drop a bottle of wine in there, a bottle of water. They would both get chilly. And we'd take a break, maybe around 8 o'clock, 8.30, quench our thirst, and then get back to work. But we would have to leave at about 11 or 11.30. Even today, April 2024, it's hot here. It's about 72 degrees. The sun will cook you. Castello, again, from a different perspective. And in 1971, when my brother and I were walking this road, we heard Abbey Road blaring from one of the homes in that little village. And we looked at each other, and we probably both thought at the same time, damn, you don't have to smoke any pot up here. You're on like a natural high. That's still true today. My grandparents on my mom's side had another vineyard here. I don't remember working with it or in it with my grandmother, but with my uncle, yes, my mom's brother, Zio Pamfilo. We would come here early in the morning and spray the vines with a sulfite. We would come home covered in blue dust and we didn't wear any masks. Il Gran Sasso, right in front of us. And I was hoping to make it to Ripa, but I don't think I'm going to do it today. I had to stop here. I think this piece of land explains why so many people left this gorgeous area. Food is great, the air is pure. But what are you going to do for a life? What are you going to do to realize your potential? 
The soil here is dry. It doesn't rain that much. You can till the soil, you can work it all you want, but how much is it going to render? And you're up in the middle of nowhere. God's country. Gorgeous, yes. One has to be careful walking around here. Going downhill like this is easy. No stress on your heart. But we have to remember, we have to make the return trip. And coming up here, <laughs> your heart starts telling you, hmm. wish there were an elevator. That's Riba, and that's my destination. And this village is Il Termine. Do you see that mountainside straight ahead? Well, built into that mountainside is San Rocco. And I'm hoping when I arrive, there will be a priest there who will offer me not only a glass of water to quench my thirst, but a little bit of red wine. What a gorgeous valley. Springtime. Never returned to Italy in April like this year. It's so green. I remember this place in August, September, July, when it's really hot. It's not as green as this. Ripa, we're almost there. Look at this rocky terrain. Can you imagine working this with a pitchfork? This is the main entrance into Riva, but vietato l'accesso. I can't go this way. I'm going to have to find another way to get in. Looks like this is going to be as close as I can get to San Rocco and Riva today. The main road was blocked and I couldn't find an alternative route and my legs are starting to get tired. I'll try to describe the smells, the aromas in this valley. The honeysuckle and the lilac bushes are in full bloom and the sweetness, the aromas those two put together is, I can't describe it. Then there are a number of what I think are either cherry trees or apple trees and they add their sweetness. Then you hear the sounds of the lizards seeking this warm sunshine in combination with the birds chirping and occasionally the church bells ringing. Viva l'Italia! Castello Frascara from a different view here in the valley. Got a chance to visit with some friends and had the opportunity to speak some Frascanese, the dialect of Frascara, which I love speaking. And tomorrow the plan is to go up to that hill mountain there. There should be Le Tre Croci the three crosses beautiful time of the day to be down here it's cooled down nice breeze not as many people work in the field <laughs> sorry not almost no one is working the fields compared to years ago Well, let's keep walking this trail. Hopefully it'll lead us to home. 